I'm just going to give a very brief introduction without slides, if you can bear with me, and then Karen's going to go through the, the project. Um, you know, one of the, the frustrations of, of working um, in landscape lighting and urban environments is, is um, trying to explain to landscape architects and architects who've just gone on trips through Europe about why they can't have the kind of things they just saw in Amsterdam. And it's, they're often heartbroken. And you then have to sort of talk back to them about, and possibly I think often speak badly about the DOT and, and then talk badly about Americans who are scared of the street and scared of strangers. And it's, it's often a very negative conversation. Um, so one of the, the reasons I, I left at this opportunity was that it was a, it was a chance to ac actually explore public lighting um, in a way that um, used art to support a, a public life on the street. And, and far from being um, stopped or blocked by the city, we got enormous support from Percentage for Art, in, who in fact sort of um, led us through the entire process. Um, we got tremendous support from the Department of Transportation. We had bridges on board. We had an extraordinary construction crew. Um, we had the Dumbo bid um, not only supported us through this, but it has also you know, helped to, to put together the finances for maintaining this, which is gonna be absolutely critical. So in some way for me, however effective it is and however people respond to it aesthetically, I think it's real value in, in some ways will be that we've sort of broken through to the other side and we're all um, working together, city agencies and, and lighting designers and lighting artists and architects to, to improve, um, to improve our, our city streets and, and make a, a sort of vibrant nighttime environment. So um, that's the, the positive note and now I'll let um, Karen explain the project in some detail. Okay, so this is a reflected ceiling plan of our project. Um, you don't often see a project about an intervention into an existing urban space lead off with a reflected ceiling plan. Uh, and when was the last time you saw a conceptual RCP? Um, <laughs> Yet making this image for us really, um, really sort of built the site for us, that it's revealed to us an aspect of the site which is sort of undervalued, um, unnoticed, um, basically the underside of a very familiar place. Uh, I don't need to introduce the site, I don't think. Um, this is one of the most visible uh, symbols of the city and one of its most you know, visited monuments. And um, I'm sure everybody in this room has walked over the bridge and knows what a singular experience it really is. Um, George Toto writes about seeing the city from such an elevation that for a moment it imparts a sort of a maybe artificial feeling that one could actually know such a complex artifact. You're a little bit above. The city's a little bit simpler. Uh, you have no problem with elevational clarity um, from the site itself. This is the pedestrian entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge. Right there are actually the stairs that cut through the, um, the anchorage that actually affords access uh, from the concept of the city to this urban fact. These spaces were dark and forbidding. And as, uh, as you can see, the, the stairs themselves are almost impossible to see in this image and very, very difficult to find. So perhaps the first problem was to connect the travel top of the bridge and its access below, or the residual space created beneath to attach the bridge as an experience to one's arrival in Brooklyn um, in the memories and imaginations of its visitors. So the site from above, this, this site is really a pivot in a set of really complex urban conditions. Um, as most of you know, this is, the surrounding area is, is Dumbo in Brooklyn, and one of its most distinct characteristics is its boundedness. Uh, to the north it was the East River. Um, here is the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, and the elevated Brooklyn Queens Expressway here. And what happens is the bridges and the BQE form a series of spaces extremely similar to our site that actually contain the stairs. 
and these vehicular geometries sort of interrupt the city grid, making, um, making intuitive wayfinding quite difficult. The same elements, ironically, that give Dumbo its intense, urban, very bounded um, spatial quality. There are dozens of such spaces around Dumbo, and they're all residual, all adjacent to, yet somehow separate from, the monumental works of infrastructure that created them. So maybe the second problem then for us became, um, how do we distinguish our site in such a context? Uh, to give you an idea, this is Washington Street. This is Prospect. Here is Cadman Plaza Park, and the main entrance to the A train is right here. You can just see as a little bit of a shadow right there, the access stair. So when a visitor arrives in, um, from the bridge, you can get a sense of the surrounding areas guided by maps and signage. Um, this is actually one of dozens of signs that were made by, um, uh, by a neighbor over the course of the last couple of years. The Parks Department and the DOT would take them down and she constantly made them and put them back up. So clearly the community understood the, um, the, the require, you know, that we needed to make an intervention. So our intervention consists of two discrete systems. One is a field condition and one is figurative. There's a series of linear forms that are drawn on the structure, um, strongly directional as if pulled by the gravitational force of the familiar path above. And the spaces underneath the underpass are tinged with a blue light, um, blue being a distinctive value in the urban visual field, which makes naming the space and reference to it from a distance pretty intuitive. So this is Prospect Street, which is a really high, very highly trafficked day and night, except of course for the moment of taking this photograph. Um, the forms actually gesture very quickly around the corner. Um, there are fewer uh, rays here, so it's really, we thought of it as something that you would take in at the speed of traffic, uh, not necessarily a space for thoughtful contemplation. Um, most of the linear arrays are on Washington Street, which is visible from a considerable distance away. As you can see here, the shot is taken on Washington closer to the water, and there's a uh, distinct slope back up to the site. Uh, closer view here. Um, our project was part of a larger, um, a larger project coordinated by Emphasis Design, who um, designed the signage and maps that you see in the image here. They also, they coordinated our project. It was wonderful to work with them. So when one approaches from the south, you're crossing Cadman Plaza Park. It's a, you're slightly uphill and the path is oblique. So what we needed to do was extend the presence of the path deeper into the park so as to give the a visible space to go on. And the arrays here start to travel onto the vertical surfaces of the bridge. And here in the pedestrian access stair itself, uh, one more vertical array greets visitors from this direction. So these linear forms are a series of fiber optic sources. Um, the assembly consists of an illuminator, basically a box with a light source in it, and a series of fiber, um, a series of fiber optic cables. The illuminators are actually mounted um, onto brackets between, uh, on the existing bridge structure. Uh, they're in plain sight, but they're veiled by the, the bridge structure itself. The fiber optic cables are supported by a series of slender aluminum channels, um, which are also in turn hung from the existing structure. Uh, the blue light emanates from a series of LEDs mounted between, um, between the steel beams. They are tinged with the blue light at the verticals over the sidewalks, so it's actually the vertical surfaces, the ma uh, masonry supports that are tinted blue. Um, part of our process was included the construction of a full-scale mock-up of one of the arrays and one of the blue-tinted blue LEDs on the roof of Linnea's office um, to lighting design in, uh, in Williamsburg. Um, what I really loved about this process was that the array really became both a full-scale drawing. We actually we mapped um, both the steel structure and the support mechanism for the array out and constructed part of it. So it was both a drawing and the artifact itself, something I haven't been able to do before. And the blue, ca uh, the blue light recast this space, also a residual space, as another, as another space as unique in one's visual field. So that's it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.